Hi, my name is Brett Miller. I'm a fourth generation farmer and I've earned a degree in agricultural engineering from the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. I'd like to talk a little bit about the Harvest Harmonics technology. I'm also the Chief Technology Officer for Harvest Harmonics and Organic Earth Tech. The basis for this, I think, is a starting point to understand is that this is a new technology. It is different. It is based on the fundamental motions of physics in that every molecule of everything we can feel and touch, the atoms are connected via these electron bonds, of course. And rather than these bonds being very static, they're in motion. And so what you have at a molecular level are atoms that are oscillating and rotating and doing these various motions because these electron bonds are like springs. And so this motion, of course, creates a frequency that if you map it over time, looks like a typical frequency that we're all familiar with. So everything has this natural vibratory motion. Now every young engineering student learns the story of how these vibratory motions uh, can sum up into a composite frequency for any structure, for example. In 1940, there's a very famous bridge that was built over the Tacoma Narrows that at the time we didn't know about wind load or the effect of wind load on a bridge. And this concrete and steel structure got to oscillating at precisely the natural frequency of the structure of this bridge. And when that happens under certain conditions, you get an additive effect. And this bridge all of a sudden began to self propagate and undulate in, a, in an expanding uh, wave motion so that eventually this steel and concrete bridge just tore itself apart. Well, of course, today we design bridges to take it into account the wind load, but these natural frequencies are an important design consideration in anything that we build. For example, when designing tractor seats, we know, and we've known this since the early 70s, that a tractor seat that oscillates at about four or five times a second will match the natural frequency of the internal organs of the tractor driver. And so by riding over a bumpy field, if the springs on your tractor seat don't account for this, you can create this natural frequency in the internal organs of your body and create this hyperventilation, which is not very comfortable for a tractor driver. So we've seen that natural frequencies exist. We've seen that natural frequencies can affect living things. Can we measure them? Well, as it turns out, we've been measuring these vibrational frequencies and substances for a very long time. The technology is called infrared spectroscopy. Um, it's simply a machine where you put a substance in, you shine an infrared light onto that substance, and the vi various vibrations of the different molecular bonds within that substance create various spikes and peaks in a representative graph on the back side. And we've mapped out these various graphs. So for example, if we see an oxygen-hydrogen bond, it has a particular peak and spike and pattern. So we know what's in that substance. So great, we can now take pictures of these vibratory motions that are in all things. So harvest harmonics technology is kind of built on these two principles. We've taken it one step further in that we've actually recorded these vibratory frequencies. And we've recorded the vibratory frequencies of not just the substance themselves, but of the various metabolic processes that occur in a plant, for example, so that we can record the optimum natural frequency for photosynthesis in a plant. We have recorded the natural optimum frequency for nitrogen and phosphorus and then potassium absorption in plants. And what we've done with this technology is we've taken it and programmed it into a silicon-based microtransmitter that can then re-emanate these optimum frequencies back into the soil and into the plant to create an optimum tuning, if you will, of plant performance. So silicon is used to make computer chips in your computer. They can be programmed. So we program these 
frequencies, there are over 3,000 optimum frequencies that we program into the microtransmitters that we place on an irrigation system similar to what I'm standing in front of here. Microtransmitters are programmed so that the first time the water passes by it, it activates. Now, there's no power supply needed. This is a, a passive activation. Water is a unique substance. It's what's known as a polar molecule. It's slightly positive on one side, slightly negative on the other side. It has unique characteristics that allow it to adhere to various things and to cohese together with itself. Because of the unique characteristics of water, water will passively pull these frequencies out of the microtransmitter as it's flowing past it. It flows into the soil, is absorbed into the plant. These frequencies are designed to um, improve both absorption and utilization of water and nutrients from the soil. The technology doesn't replace any nutrients. But what we've seen in our field trials is that over time, less nutrients are needed, more nutrients are retained in the soil, which is very exciting for us. We've also found that by programming in the optimum frequency for photosynthesis, we really have stepped into what we think is the next green revolution. And in fact, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, along with some of the top agricultural research institutions in the world, have been investing tens of millions of dollars in genetically modifying plants to enhance photosynthesis. By their own estimates, they're probably 20 years away from having a viable product. Our product today enhances that photosynthesis process using a non-chemical method. Uh, like I said, it's a new technology, uh, but hopefully my explanation of where it has come from and how we put this together makes some sense to you. I would invite you to explore this technology and hopefully you'll get the results that our field tests have gotten as well with faster plant growth, increased nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium absorption, and a greater fresh weight of the, uh, of the crop. All right, welcome to the future of farming. We are the future of farming and we have selected you to be part of this incredible adventure. Come join us and experience for yourself just how big of an impact one simple decision to change your farm can make. We know and understand that seeing is believing, and it all starts here.